I want to show you a simple model today that shows you how you can turn a draining, dehydrating, fertility losing landscape into a water harvesting, rehydrating, fertility gaining landscape. It's going to save you money, water, and bring you a lot of joy. And what I've got here is a little two scale model. So this is a, uh, a 1,000 square foot house on a 4,400 square foot uh, property. What happens when the rain rains on this? Well, let's check it out. Here comes the rain. And it's out of here. So the problem here is this is a typical um, built environment landscape where um, we've got the pavement of the house itself and then the landscape is pretty compacted soil and it's not absorbent. So we are draining the rain as opposed to retaining the rain. And let's say you got two inches of rain in a good storm. Well, you'd be lucky if you got a fraction of that. So if you want to retain rather than drain the water, how might you go about that? Well, a lot of times people think about tanks. So tanks, that's great. So here's a 1,700 gallon tank. Here's another 1,700 gallon tank. And let's bring the rain on back. So here comes the rain and the tanks are full. Woohoo! So we caught some rain that time. Uh, we did lose water. You still saw water being lost to runoff, um, but we retained some of it. Whereas before we weren't retaining any of it. So how much did we get? Well, we got uh, 1,700 gallons here. Ah, delicious. Rainwater is the sweet water of the gods. Okay, another 1,700 gallons. Mmm, love it. So tanks are great. I use tanks. So right beside me here are two 1,000 gallon rainwater tanks that collect the water off the roof. And that is my primary source of domestic water for drinking, cooking, washing, bathing, and more. With the tanks in place, we were able to capture a good bit of the water that was running off the roof, but where we, where we really missed the boat was in the landscape itself, which is a much larger area than the roof. So how would we capture that water? Well, to do that, we need the sponge, a living sponge. Now I'm gonna bring in a literal sponge, but a living sponge would be very absorbent sponge-like materials such as compost, mulch, vegetation, and living soils that would rapidly absorb the water rather than rapidly draining it. So now with both tanks in place and sponge, let's see what happens. So here comes the rain, and I think it's gonna be a big rain. Oh, the tank's just filled. They're overflowing a bit. I think we're losing a little water to overflow but nowhere near as much water as was just flowing out of the system before. So how much water did we get? All right, so I'm gonna remove the house momentarily. I'm gonna replace it with a jar and we've got, and I'm gonna put this sideways. So we've got 1,700 gallons of water from that tank, 1,000 700 gallons of water from that tank. So nice, okay? So that water at my pinky level, that's water that otherwise would have been lost. 3,400 gallons, which we got for free, okay? But what about the water that was captured in the sponge? Okay, so let's take one of those sponges. Yes, so much more water. And that's only half the sponge. So what about this one? Oh, nice. Oh my God. All right, now I haven't fully wrung out those sponges by any means, but if you look at where my pinky is here down at the bottom of the jar, and then you look at how much more water we caught above that from the sponge, we caught well over 10 times, maybe that's 20, over 20 times as much water in the living soils, in the living sponge, than we did in the tank. So the take home message here is tanks are a fantastic strategy to harvest rainwater, to have readily at hand for multiple uses, be that drinking, cooking, bathing, washing, irrigating plants, and so forth. But don't overlook the landscape, because 
the landscape is our largest and least expensive tank with a much greater capacity if we create the conditions where it is absorbent and rather than compact and draining. Well, wait a minute. How am I going to access that water that's in the sponge, aside from wringing it out? You grow living pumps. So you grow trees and shrubs. So then they act as living pumps. They pump that water out of the soil into their tissue and you can access and utilize it in the form of fruit, food, uh, shade, windbreaks, uh, ha wildlife habitat, fragrance, and so much more. What is so great about this living sponge tank, this living sponge bank, is unlike the tank banks of rainwater, the living sponge tank bank <laughs> has, it generates compound interest. It's not just holding water, it's also helping generate myriad other resources in the form of that vegetation and other life interacting with that. What's more is this living soil helps directly recharge the groundwater table, which then helps recharge the flows of our creeks, springs, and rivers, which are recharged by the groundwater flow, which is sourced by the captured and infiltrated rainwater. For this to work to the optimum level, along with the spongy soils and the tanks, it's key that you also create a water harvesting topography by further planting the rain with basin-like shapes as opposed to hill-like shapes, even if it's subtle, okay? Um, and you can check out my muffin tin demonstration video that goes into greater detail on that. Check out my books, Rainwater Harvesting for Drylands and Beyond, available at deep discount direct from me, because they go into way more detail and show you how to step-by-step -step implement these in steep slopes, in gradual slopes, in flat areas, and all kinds of different climates with all kinds of different strategies, all of which are planting the rain and tanking the rain as opposed to draining the rain. And please like and subscribe.